right here is the top half of the suspension completely stripped so new cones new suspension new bushes etc get it all back on and get it tested i'm gonna have to clean all these bits and uh, i'm gonna also have to order new bits so i'll get on with that and then i'll come back to you when it's all ready to be refitted Right, so the new cones have arrived. They, um, I've not went for the cheap imitation ones, I've actually went for the Alex Maltin ones because I want them to last. So, that's the new one. It's the new one. And compared to the old ones. You can see the difference that these things actually squash over time. And just to make it even more obvious the difference, look at that. This is the one that was on the right hand side, the driver's side, which um, was obviously sitting lopsided. So, yep, well due replacement. The old knuckle joints that came off the car, you will notice, are different. This one here, is one of the ones for cars after 1990 the reason being that they went to bigger wheel sizes then and this spacer here lifts it higher off the ground so you can buy one of these i think they are between 20 or 30 pound which is extortionate for what it is or you can buy one of these ones which i did do for i believe that was about three pound and you just buy a shim that goes on And basically that offsets that. So this is the way I've went. So with this mismatch on the knuckles and the mismatch on the rubber cones, whoever has repaired it previously has just used the hilos to compensate the ride height, which affects the handling. So that's why I'm just going back to scratch and getting everything new, everything balanced and everything the same, and we'll see what difference it makes at the end. So... These are the arms have been refurbed, they've been taken back to bare metal, recoated, repainted. Um, I've replaced the shock mounting bracket here with what I need. Kept anything I didn't need to replace because I want original parts as well. But same with here. So these are just ready now to get built back up and get back on the car, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to focus on the same side you see me taking apart and I'll do the other side off camera. So yeah, let's start getting this reassembled and getting Ed back on the road because I've missed driving him. So I've got the upper bump stops installed, just went for polyurethane and because this is <clears throat> running on 13 inch wheels I need the bump stop to bring it down that little bit more. <clears throat> you got smaller wheels, you don't need this bump stop in here, the standard right hide's normal. So, it's better to do this first because once you've got the cone and things in it, access in here is very limited. So underneath here I've just got the... I've got a spring washer to hold it in place and I've got a normal nut and a bit of fiddling just gets it secured. Right. When you're ready to put everything back together, you'll be tempted just to jump into the car and start <coughs> putting the parts in place and bolting in, um, which is what I done the first time I done it. But preparation: if you prepare everything now, it'll make your life so much easier when it goes in. For example, everything's on the bench; it's easy to work with. I've got everything, the high lows you can see here and here, all copper greased up, all through the threads, cones, copper greased up. Again, I've said before, just keeping it clear of the rubber because it's bad for the rubber, copper grease. Same on this side. And <clears throat> the top arms. I've got the knuckle in place here. Sometimes this is a real pain to get in. It's a very, very tight fit here and here. So what I tend to do is just use some normal grease. 
smear it on here, smear it in here. If it, it'll still be tight, but if it eases it going in, even better. Or if it doesn't, which it didn't for this one, what I done was just take the rubber boot off. And it basically means you've got the end part here, which is the nylon cup. You can push it down. Then it's a bit fiddly getting the rubber boot back on, especially when your hands are covered in grease, but as you can see, it's possible. So, um, yep, <clears throat> that's what I'm going to do with this one. I'm going to see if I can get the grease in here and here, get it pushed in. If not, I'll just do exactly what I've just said and I'll put you on the tripod to watch. This part in here, I have cleaned just with a file and sandpaper because it needs to be clean, it needs to be smooth for the knuckle to go in. And obviously <clears throat> I've refurbed these arms so you need to be careful there's no paint got inside. If there has, just um, clear it out. And the reason I'm using this grease, it sticks to it a bit better and like I just said, copper grease um, is bad for the rubber so this is just um, normal grease. So the bit at the top here it has to be square when it's going, if you put it at an angle it won't go. Honest, I've done this a few times now and um, it's not went either of the time, this way anyway. If you've watched my videos before you'll know I hate working with grease. I don't know what it is, it's just slimy and slippy and uh, it's just annoying. Yep, so you can see there the problem, you try to push it down but you've obviously, <coughs> the knuckle joint's got some play in it. So, just being careful, the rubber boot can pull back, again grease makes it hard. And just separates from the nylon cup. As you can see there's not a great amount of grease in here anyway comes factory so I'll put more grease on that but you've now got this nylon cup that can fit in here and you've also got a bigger surface area to push on now the last one went in by hand if need be it can get a slight tap but it is plastic at the end of the day so just be careful So, you can see it sticks out slightly, that's as far down as it goes into the knuckle. What I'm going to do is just get this some more grease. You've driven a mini, and these things wear through or they run dry. Whenever you go over a bump, you'll hear a creaking noise. That's, um, that's this. Or it's one of the things anyway. The minis like to creak. But just remember, you get to a certain age and you bend and go over bumps, you make some strange noises too, so this is just a mini showing its age. So, that's going to be fiddly. Just trying to get this tight rubber boot over here. Remember, it's designed to be tight until it gets over, so. What I've found is, <clears throat> by trial and error, just by pushing down and twisting and just trying to get it all over and then just getting a screwdriver for the last bit. But, once it goes, it goes. There you go. So, can you imagine trying to do that when you're putting that on the car? Nightmare. Been there, done that. I'm not doing it again. <coughs> so, built up, built up. Don't forget the 
Dankeschön. Looking at the mini sites, these shims, it says you can use two, no more than two it recommends. <clears throat> because obviously the higher you go up, the less room you're leaving here for, <clears throat> for purchase in here. So, um, the good thing with having high lows is you can adjust the height with that. Right, next we're going to get onto the car and get the cone held in place with the cone compressor. I got the other ones out by using these high lows, but you've seen the difference in the, the height of the cone. <clears throat> these will compress a lot easier and they've obviously got brand new threads in them. So what I do is I put that in place, held in place and compress it with the rubber cone compressor and then it just gives you a lot more room to work with. So I'm just going to tighten this up <coughs> till it's um, compressed quite a bit, then I'll come back to you. So if you remember the pin still through here, this was left in before, no need to take it out unless you're replacing it. I've given this a coating of grease, <coughs> all that will be greased up through the grease nipple once it's all assembled. And I've also put copper grease on the end here to assist future rust. So. Now it's just a case of getting this put in place and getting it all connected up, but not forgetting these. So the one on this side here is already on the shaft and this one here goes in there. And this needs to go in here but so that it basically sits between here and the subframe and then the bolt goes on the outside. And it's basically a thrust washer that keeps the grease from coming out. Right, this can be a bit fiddly. If you have got someone to give you a hand, um, take it. I don't at the moment, my wee helper's busy, so... Um, so, again, I'm just putting copper grease in here for the bit that sits in the bottom of the cone. And likewise, on the other end that sits on the knuckle. So this basically sits on here, this sits in here, this bit sits in the cone that's been held by the cone compressor, and it all fits through here. What could possibly go wrong? So for some reason that didn't record there, but <clears throat> as you can see we've got most of it in now. I've got the bump stop in, that was just the screw that goes in here. Again polyurethane, same as the top. 
it took quite a bit of fiddling to get um, this all lined up because the height here, the spring, uh, the rubber cone had to be compressed quite a bit but eventually got it so the rubber cone was held in place, compressed, got the high low in and then basically fed the arm with the knuckle joint in it up there got this lined up and knocked through here got everything tightened up and torqued up I will put the torque settings up here just now so the only thing left to go on this side is the um, shock absorber one of the problems I've come across is getting this um, this nut basically back in here you can see access there really bad I've tried getting my son to help he can fit his hands through here but the problem is this is not lining up correctly so it's just not getting in a turning um, and I was basically looking at ways to do it without getting in here and taking the radiator out but We've tried it now and tried a few different ways and it's not working so it's looking like the radiator's going to have to come out for access. So, there we go, the whole radiator out just to get access down to get this screw in here. Didn't expect to do it, didn't plan to do it, but I've said before that's classic cars, they throw all things at you. Just need to get on with it, have patience and keep your um, determination. Lots both fit in there, I've got access, it's so easy, it's unbelievable. But that's that done now, the rest of the suspension is tidied up, tightened up. So as previously said, I went for new shock absorbers. These are just oil. The ones that I took off were a bit worse for wear, so these are straightforward. They just um, slide on through the nuts, the washers, etc., and um, get tightened up. Before you put this on, just open it and extend it six times to get rid of any air and to check for any operation. If there's no resistance or if it's not consistently smooth, send it back. Right, before I can get the new shock absorber on, you can see the <coughs> inner sleeve from the last shock absorber still here. I've tried grabbing this with mole grips but no joy. And I, I don't want to go into moving this bracket because I know these bolts are renowned for snapping and that's just a whole lot of problems I don't need just now. Right, so the sleeve that we've seen stuck on there put up one hell of a fight. The only way I could get it loose in the end was by heat. <coughs> heat, putting more grips on and twisting and manoeuvring it off. But it's now off and ready for the shock absorber to go on. As you can see I've put some grease here and I've put some copper grease on the threads. Same as uh, the bottom. So let's just uh, get the shock absorber on and get it tightened up. So the washer goes on first, top and bottom. And then the shock absorber, straight forward, slides on. It's on fairly easy. Second washer on. And the same on the top. Bolts on and just tighten down. There you go, new shock absorber tightened up, tightened up. Everything else is in place that I'm happy with. It's just a case of getting the other side done, getting all the bits and pieces back together and checking it out. I've set the right height to what the same height as a trumpet would be. I'm predicting it'll be quite high, it'll sit quite high to start with because the cone needs time to settle so I might need to tweak the right height but I'm going to get everything back together first see how I'm feeling about the right height let it settle for a, um, a bit of time and then like I say I might need to tweak it so I'll go and get everything else back together and I'll come back to you 
once that's done. And the new Folly Bush mounts to replace the torn rubber ones. These are just going to go on the same as they came off. Right, that's it all back together. It's quite high. I'm going to see how it settles down over the next few days and adjust if need be. But I've measured both sides and both sides are the same. So by going for one shot drive it's already settled down slightly and it will do the more I drive it. So it probably will need adjusted but that's just I am driving a few miles it's already dropped by about an inch so don't be worried if it looks quite high when you first do it because it will settle down. I thought I would come back to you after the car's done quite a few miles just to show you how much the actual suspension drops and levels out so you can see here three and a half fingers worth so I will need to adjust it just to get it set right the um, other side is about the same it's because it's sitting on a slope at the moment it's kind of tipping to this side but I've measured it, it's both the same and that's now done about 300, 350 miles since I changed it so it just shows you how much it actually drops in that time and how you need to keep an eye on it just to get things set up correctly for them. So the test drive's done, how did it handle? Uh, fantastic, the front end feels really smooth going over bumps, you know, it just feels like a, a new car. Um, so much so that it shows the back end is really rough and bumpy, so you kind of know the diff notice the difference between the front and the back. So the back will be on the agenda at some point. Still got a slight pull to the right, which I wasn't too happy with, but I'll look into that. Um, I've changed a few bits and pieces, and I've still to go through all the brakes. So uh, yeah, I will cover that. But gave me quite a few problems, um, mainly with access getting into small areas, bolts and the usual rust issues but other than that it was fine if you're just methodical take your time and if you've got patience then it'll be fine and it's it's well worth doing it because it transforms how the car handles. As always thanks for watching take care and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!